Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Ironworker Gaming Channel. I am Ironworker814, and thank you for joining me for another Destiny 2 PvP viewer requested weapon review, where we look at pros, cons, stats, damage numbers, and how to obtain the weapon. This review is coming to you by request of Cyber and Just King40. We do have quite a lengthy list of these viewer requested weapon reviews going, but if you would like to have yours reviewed, make sure you're subbed up to the Ironworker Gaming Channel and drop your weapon in the comments below. Just please be patient, I'm, I'm backlogged for like two months on these weapon reviews right now, but be patient, I will get to them eventually, I promise. But the weapon we're taking a look at today is Monte Carlo, and this is a returning Destiny 1 weapon, but it's starting to see a bigger uptick in usage since the auto rifle buffs back in Season of the Worthy. And for good reason, not only is Monte Carlo sitting in the strongest archetype of auto rifles right now, but it has the ability to up its damage output even more. How much more you may be asking? Well, we'll get into that when we head into the stats and damage numbers. But first, we're going to take a look at how to obtain this weapon for those who have not done so already. Monte Carlo was reintroduced into the Destiny universe with the Shadowkeep expansion in Season of Undying. For better or for worse, Monte Carlo is an RNG world drop, so there is no direct route to get this gun, but it can drop from any activity or be obtained through any exotic ingram that might fall on the ground after defeating an enemy. Zur can also sell this weapon, so keep your eyes out for the Agent of the Nine on Friday's daily resets. And there is no exotic catalyst available for Monte Carlo yet, so let's get into the stats and damage numbers. Monte Carlo is an exotic kinetic auto rifle shooting at 600 rounds per minute with 43 rounds in the magazine. As far as the stats go, reload and handling are quite good. Stability is not too shabby, but the range is pretty average when compared to other adaptive frame auto rifles. Checking in real quick with light.gg, we can see that the recoil value is 80 with a very manageable 20 for bounce intensity. The aim assist is 50, and uh, we're going to talk about that a little later on. The intrinsic trait is Monte Carlo Method. Dealing damage with this weapon reduces your melee cooldown and grants a chance to fully recharge your melee ability with each kill. We do have high caliber rounds on Monte Carlo, and the exotic perk is Markov Chain. This weapon gains increased damage from melee kills and kills with this weapon. Melee kills grant ammo for this weapon. Now heading into the damage numbers, Monte Carlo is going to do 26 points of damage on a crit and 16 points of damage to the body. Giving us an optimal time to kill of 0.7 seconds requiring 7 crits and 1 body shot, and a body shot time to kill of 1.2 seconds requiring 13 shots landed. With the Markov chain, we're kind of seeing a Rampage Swashbuckler hybrid damage buff going on here, and we can build this up to 5 stacks simply by killing enemies with this weapon. But if you do get a melee kill while holding Monte Carlo, you're going to get your 5 stacks immediately. And these last for just under 5 seconds. Now when doing some initial research, I was seeing people throw out like a 67 or 60% damage buff on Markov Chain times 5 and while that might ring true in PvE, that is not the case in PvP. Now during my damage testing, I found that each stack of Markov Chain is going to give you about a 7% damage increase, give or take a little bit because of number rounding. And with the full 5 stacks, we're going to be doing 36% more damage per hit. Now I just wanted to put it on screen here real quick so you could see it, we're doing 34 points of damage on a crit and 20 points of damage to the body, putting our optimal time to kill at 0.5 seconds requiring 6 crits, and a body shot time to kill of 0.9 seconds requiring 10 shots landed. I didn't want to go through every damage value for Markov Chain because I'd like you to stay awake for the duration of this video, but you can use the given percentages and damage numbers to calculate it on your own if you're extremely curious. And with all that out of the way, let's take a look at where this weapon excels in the Crucible. Alright, Monte Carlo really does have some things going for it in the Crucible here. Aside from falling into the auto rifle archetype with the fastest optimal time to kill, we also have high caliber rounds, which are great for flinching your opponents. The strong handling and reload stats make Monte Carlo feel like a very agile weapon, which is great for getting in tight where the action is a little more intense. And generally speaking, tight is where you're going to want to be playing with this gun since everything funnels straight into your melee ability. Just by laying on the trigger and landing shots in the Crucible, you're really going to see your melee meter climb. And then when getting a kill with Monte Carlo, you have a very good chance of refreshing your melee meter completely. This happens over 50% of the time, probably even closer to 75% of the time. It is very frequent. And having your charged melee up as much as possible is a big key to success with this gun. 
Since on a melee kill, you're getting that nice 36% damage buff to Monte Carlo with the better time to kill. I mean, gradually increasing your damage through kills with Monte Carlo is nice, but that melee final blow is really where it's at. And absolutely build into this gun's strengths a little bit. You know, get that strength stat boosted up a little bit, get an exotic armor piece on that benefits your melee ability, and run the subclass that you feel has the best melee ability to suit your playstyle. Anything to ensure that your melee is as strong as possible and up as often as possible. Because with Markov Chain Times 5, you have the ability to tear through packs of enemies. But as with all weapons, we do have some shortcomings to look at, and we'll do that now as we head into the cons. Alright, first off, Monte Carlo, at least on PC, feels like it shoots right where you're aiming. And you're probably thinking, whoa, Ironworker, this was supposed to go up there in the pros. But the point I want to make with this is this gun feels like it does very little to help you hit your shots. Remember, Monte Carlo has a very average range stat, and that 50 in aim assist is quite a bit lower than other 600 RPM auto rifles. This just makes Monte Carlo feel a little less sticky and have a little less bullet magnetism, so it's mainly going to be on you to keep that reticle on target and land your shots. Also, this gun rewards a more aggressive playstyle, and I'm not saying you have to go full on 8 mode, but you at least gotta be there in the action getting some melee kills to get that Markov chain damage buff going. If you're a lower skill player or someone just not comfortable playing that tight, this could be a big con for you. And to be completely honest, I fall under this net. I'm sure if you've caught some of my other videos, you've heard me talking about getting a little bit older, some diminishing twitch reflexes, needing room to operate, playing in the mid-range, the list goes on. Now, I don't necessarily mind getting in closer, playing a little more aggressive, but when I do, that's, uh, that's when the shotgun's coming out. And remember, you do need to be wielding Monte Carlo if you want to get that damage buff from your melee kills. And I'm really just not confident enough with my close range skill set while holding an auto rifle to pull off the maneuvers that need to be done to get the full benefits from using Monte Carlo. And lastly, as far as kinetic 600 RPM auto rifles go, there is a weapon sitting in that slot right now that may make you think twice about equipping Monte Carlo. That being the extreme meta heavy hitter Suros Regime. Suros currently is a very impressive weapon. Rather than having to secure a melee kill to get your damage buff going, Suros can dip into the sub 0.5 second time to kill range just by laying on the trigger. Now this doesn't mean completely disregard or rule out Monte Carlo, it's just something to consider. So, is Monte Carlo worth taking into the Crucible? I would say yes, Monte Carlo is a really solid gun. Because listen, just, just because a gun doesn't fit my playstyle, doesn't mean it won't fit yours, and I think I'm probably in the minority on this one. I'm sure a lot of people can pick Monte Carlo up and wield it just fine, and, and really get a lot out of it. And Monte Carlo absolutely can be very strong, and has a lot to offer the Guardian with the skill set and mindset required to use it correctly. So if you've made it to this point in the video and you did enjoy it, please remember to give it a like and if you'd like to see more Destiny 2 reviews, guides, and discussions all made by yours truly, consider subscribing to the Ironworker Gaming channel. If you'd like to catch me live, you can head over to Twitch, look for Ironworker814, give me a follow and you'll get notified whenever I hop on. If you'd like to get a hold of me, the absolute best way to do that is to leave a comment down below. I read and respond to all my comments because I truly enjoy interacting with you guys. And with all that being said, I'd like to thank you for spending a piece of your day checking out this weapon review. You guys are awesome, and I will catch you on the next one.